Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Planescape Torment. I am your host, Melee Wizard. All right. So, we've got a new lead. And it pretty much just surrounds proving that this one lady is related to the night hag that we've been searching for. Uh... I'm gone. Let's see. It was... Okay. So I, I'm gonna, it looks like I'm gonna have to do some investigating, and I'm gonna at the moment I'm gonna assume that it's all centered around this place. Ah, uh, okay. Figure if I had ask enough of them, so a question like this will come Updated through my journal. here. I too have heard such a rumor, but I do not know. Perhaps another of the women here can give you the answer, if not Kesai herself. Ask Juliet. She and Kesai were once good friends before Juliet met Montague. Okay, so Juliet. Which one? Okay. Is Juliet in her quarters? Yes, she is. See, sad Juliet looking as miserable as ever. She barely acknowledges your presence looking your way only briefly before staring off into space once more. Oh, nothing at all, only that I spend my days gazing into the face of mediocrity, seeing if anything can erase its dreadful, tedious passage. Uh, I fear how this will be taken, but... Although I think I've already had this conversation. Okay. Juliet exhales a long and forlorn sigh. You realize she's not even really looking at you. Hmm? Oh, I was not truly listening. So it feels like there's something, uh... Uh, what did you have in mind? I'm not sure, some element of danger or jealousy, something intense. Not actually have one, but excellent notion, most excellent. But he knows my handwriting. Well, thou write some for me. Uh, Scofflaw pen. He runs a print shop. Aha! Okay, so the print shop is suddenly relevant. Updated my journal. Okay. I've got. Uh, I've got a lead, and let's go, let's go do I'm that. Gone. Lower ward. Let's see, print shop is All up right. this way.
I have a job for you. A hundred coins. Sure. It takes money, thinks for a moment, and selects a perfume sheet of paper from a drawer in, in the desk. Interesting that he had just happened to have that on hand. He scribbles a few vacuous, lug-struck lines on it in a flowery, elegant script. This will do, I'm sure. All right. So I said uh, that she said Montague was in the Civic Fest Hall. I do believe. So let's go I'm over gone. there and see if. See if he was someone that I had already had a conversation with, because I don't remember. Yeah. Though it feels weird that I'm messing around with someone's Your love life, but. Skills are quite potent. I should have you spend some time at the brothel when we get back. Oh, the gods are merciful. Okay, then. Uh, All right. All right. Nobody in there. No, nobody relevant, anyway. Ah, there you are. Once more, I extend to thee my greetings. Is there something that wished of me? Oh. Ah, uh, this is at her request, but I still don't feel good about this. Thou speak falsely. I would have thee present present me proof before I took thy claim as true. He he takes the letters and reads them over. Alas, tis true. She has found another who loves her passionately. Ah, uh, heartache is a sensate's fate, I think. I shall move on to another love and let this other suitor have her, considering the passion of her word considering the passion of his words. I gotta be honest. And why did she not simply say something? Apparently not. What should so what should be done? <laughs> Mort and Mort has his two cents. And trust me, kids, start ignoring her. Create some friction. Leave them wondering and they'll be clawing all over to discover what the matter is. Right, Chief? Uh I mean is this not what she wanted, sort of? I don't know. I mean, I am getting experience for this, so it feels like I'm doing something right, but I, uh, I, I don't feel good about doing this. Uh, but you know what? It's if I need, if I'm going to get any information out of her, Done. I got to do what I got to do, right? Yeah, this is probably... Yes. Updated my journal. There we go. Ravel. Ah, I thought I might have heard that name before. I know not the truth of it, but I have heard such a rumor. 
though thou may wish to ask Kamaxi and oh god her about that that very same question. They are half sisters, you see. Okay. <laughs> Revel puzzle what? Who? Oh. Uh -huh. Fair enough. What's done is done. Uh, I think this was your room. All right, yep, yeah, it's just one thing leading to another. Um, you know what? It, the option's there. Now that's an unusual request. I don't know, He's, it seems pretty foul-mouthed already. He, that's, he seems pretty foul-mouthed, Kamaxi bladder dung, you scruffy goat gammed harlot. You wish you had legs like mine, you pitiful wretch of a bone box. I can walk, run, dance. What do you do? Bob around wishing you had a pair, goats or otherwise. The, the two of them lay into one another, exchanging barb blistering insults and clashing with razor-edged tongues, and probably enjoying it on some level. At last, the two stop their bickering, and eerie silence settles over them as they eye one another hatefully. Finally, the Tiffling makes a grudging admission to Mort. You're not bad, really. Not bad at all. Better than you, perhaps? Eh? Eh? Don't push it, Skull. <laughs> New taunts, alright! I, I won't, Tiffling. I will admit I might have learned a thing or two, though. Good thinking, Chief. Uh, yeah. Start with the half-sister bit. Yes, I'm related to that chubby, mewling, hook-nosed daydreamer. Same father, different mothers. So? Updated my journal. Maxi frowns at you. Normally I'd loathe to help you like this, but I have a feeling it'd upset that flirting, preening, doxy good and well. Tell her to ask our father. He's a powerful Cambian, so she ought to be able to call to him right then and there. That'll get you your answer. Uh, what was a Cambian again? Yes, Cambian. Didn't hear me the first time. Ears all stopped up with the last of your brains running out of them. Right. Yes, I am clueless. What of it? A half-fiend, Burke. Sort of like you, but you're half-dung, I think. You smell it at any rate. Uh, all right. That, that, hell's how I loathe that woman. Why would you even believe that sort of tripe? She says that you deny it and in fact may not know it, but that it's true. She said you could ask your father, that he would tell you. Updated my journal. Kasai stares at you silently for a time. Give me a moment. She turns from you and begins to mutter softly. The air seems to shimmer around her slightly and fills with a coppery smell like warm blood. Kasai Remy turned away from you for a moment before finally coming to face you. I do not want to believe that wicked hag may have been my mother. I have lived long. I do not appear to age and have disturbing dreams sometimes. <laughs> but still, I do not wish to be the inheritor of the evil she caused, nor draw the lady's gaze as my mother did. Such evil things she did. I heard that she would pose impossible riddles to people. Riddles she could answer, but no one else could. She would devour the person if they answered incorrectly, or leave them dangling in her horrifying gardens as examples to all. Those few who somehow escaped, she tormented in their dreams, riding them like steeds, breaking their wills, and hurling their souls into the colorless oblivion of the Grey Waste. Her magic was said to be beyond anything most had ever seen. It was imagination woven from nightmare and given substance. Stone and solid shapes bent to her will like soft clay. 
The laws of the plains would bend beneath her feet, and from nothing she would weave a, she could weave illusion, and from illusion weave realities that could horrify and kill and confound. She was a mistress of all the dark arts, mistress and master of them all. She hounded a governor that dared quote sigil law to her with shadows that devoured him, all but his tongue, his fingers, and the flesh of his face. She turned mercy killers inside out and shattered buildings of those who displeased her. Terrible, terrible powers were at her command. She changed her shape like water and would use it to destroy some for amusement and to steal knowledge from others. She was a monster like all that has been spawned from the Grey Waste. In the end, she threatened to open the cage and let the fury of the plains come rolling in like a wave. Fortunately, she did not succeed. She existed solely to cause malice. I do not know if she is dead, but I know now that she was my mother. Oh, that I had tears so that I could weep with sorrow. Just... Just leave me be. I'll be fine. I just need some time to think about it after... Uh, that's all. <laughs> Pardon? The portal key to Ravel's maze is a piece of her, and you are of her blood. It is close enough. Kasai gasps. You intend to seek her out? Her surprise quickly changes to an expression of wariness. What? What would you need of me? Your book. Only a drop or two. But do you have some way to carry it? A piece of cloth, like a handkerchief or something, you know? No. Updated my journal. Handkerchief, huh? Okay. Oh, really? Right, he was looking for that. You know what? While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go give this back to him. I don't know if it'll accomplish a heck of a lot, but... Uh, jewel. There you are. I'm glad these thing places are marked. give me something to interact with if I'm not actually going to interact with it. Done. There's an urn atop this small cabinet full of ashes and charred bits of bone. Etched into the base of the urn are the words Finn Adl Adlai, beloved husband, father, and scholar of 100 languages. Yes. See what happens if you talk. Oh. Never mind. All right, maybe I should read this thing. Never mind. Okay. A pleasure. All right. Of course, it just can't be that easy. I can't even get him to acknowledge me right now.
I mean, c I could just. Also known as Wanker City. I, I could just straight up steal, take the handkerchief from the, from there, but. I never did interact with these Modrons. The strange cubic creature seems to be as much machine as it is organic. As you approach the thing, it silently stares at you with wide, unblinking eyes. Its face hasn't the slightest trace of emotion on it. Come on, Chief. We're in a building full of some of the sexiest chits this side of the multiverse, and we're stopping to talk to Modrons. What's there to say? Annoying little clockwork pests. They're always working to impose law and order upon the multiverse. Not good, mind you. Just law. This... Just fine, whatever. Don't say I didn't warn you. You probably won't get anywhere with them, Chief. They're an odd lot to talk to. Its voice has a metallic reverberating quality to it, as if it were as if it were more a sound played out on some warped musical instrument than true speech. Your greetings as returns. There is a soft click as the creature blinks. An awkward silence hangs in the air between the two of you. All things should have a name. All things should be identified. We find your answer unsatisfactory, but it shall have to suffice for the present. For the present. We would identify ourselves as Modrons, Quadrone-type winged variants to the subject. Fair enough. Our purpose here is observation. Mathma uh, mathematician's answer. Ugh. So why are you watching Delora? We have not been informed as to the specific purpose or purposes which resulted in our being given our present task. The command of our superior pentadrone is sufficient reason to perform said task. As such, the purpose or purposes are irrelevant to us. Yes, the building located in the section of Sigil commonly known as the Clerk's Ward. We cannot give exact coordinates as the surface of Sigil changes at intervals we have not determined as of the present. The building itself is known as the Brothel of Slating Intellectual Lusts. It serves as what may be broadly defined as a language school. The students of the school are primarily females who, who intend to, at some point, we have, we have not determined, and which varies from student to student to become a factotum of the Society of, Society of Sensation. Uh, a faction whose core belief is that with experience comes true understanding of the multiverse and its secrets. never told me much regarding my construction. I know little of the inner workings of my body, much as you likely know little of yours. Outwardly, though, I am a human woman in all respects, save for the texture and temperature of my flesh. I can only assume that Merriman made the keys so that there would be no risk of me drawing away from him before he had tired of his experiments. Now that they are in my possession, I am free to develop and possess my own emotions. Do you have emotions? Its functions are as much a mystery to me as any human's. When I first came to this place, I did not understand emotions, nor have any of my own. I have feelings now, though I am only beginning to understand them. Okay. So I'm wondering if where, which line of thought here is going to lead me to that linguist. Yeah, of course. 
course it's locked. Oh. So this particular aroma is a bland and paltry order in comparison to my personal scent. Okay. Yes, I have a particular scent that seems to have gone wandering. It is somewhat difficult to keep in one place. I hope that someone did not take it by accident. Though you never know with the ladies around here. So. <laughs> How could a scent go wandering? I had meant to infer that it had been taken. The ladies here are a bit jealous at times and have been known to take my various perfumes for themselves. This time, though, someone has absconded with my own personal scent. I worked on that scent, perfected it, and now, poof, it's gone. I need not bear such annoyances. I want that scent back, and I want it now. Updated my journal. <sighs> okay. Thank you, Anna. You are too kind. Very well. If you run across it, please let me know. I am somewhat anxious to get it back. It's a wonderful kind sense, really. Okay. That Echo can actually speak. Updated my journal. No, I've no idea. Have you spoken to Nenny? She's always wandering about, taking in everything with those wide eyes of hers. Aha. Uh, are you back in your room? Here, all right. Updated my journal. Maybe. I saw that mean, mean Marissa sneaking out of Vivian's room one night. Now, I'm not saying she took it, but I know Marissa's not a very nice person, and that sure sounds suspicious, huh? I'd go ask her about it. Back to Marissa again. All right. Updated my journal. Marissa says nothing, though an angry hissing issued from her from the darkness around her. Yes, I've been known to creep into Vivian's chamber for some of her perfumes, though I doubt you'll meet another here who hasn't. If you're implying that I've got her personal scent, well, feel free to sniff around. You'll not find it on me or in my chambers, I assure you. Okay. Well, that was a bit of a dud. Nope, I am not stealing your money. Even if you're not being particularly cooperative, I'm still not stealing your money. No, I don't. Most of the women will say she's prissy, but she's always been nice enough to me, complimenting me on my eyes. And she smells so good. I hope she finds her own scent again soon. Try asking. Okay, I'll go... Oops. Accidentally clicked outside the window. Uh... Nanny? Where'd you go? 
Once they started leaving their own rooms, they're kind of hard to find, huh? Just so everybody else isn't in my way. Nene, -ne, where'd you go? Right, I talked to your mother. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, and where'd you go? Were you in here this whole time? No. Well, there's a handkerchief. But... I don't feel like stealing it from you. I want to get it legitimately, if I can. Okay, this is getting out. Where the heck did you go? Did you just like up and vanish on me or something? And if so, why? You're you're not making you're making yourself look a little suspicious by just disappearing on me like that. Let's see if exiting and re-entering makes her show up again. Done. Oh, there you... How the heck did I keep missing you? Okay. that I noticed that updated my journal okay okay see I didn't pick up on that there that solves that that hideous witch always stealing my perfumes but never did I think she would have the audacity to steal my own personal scent 
She suddenly shakes out her crimson hair, and in moments you are surrounded by the most intensely exotic and arousing scent you have ever had the pleasure of smelling. It does, does it not? And as you have done a favor for me, so I wish to perform one for you. Stand close to me, scarred one. You step closer to Vivian. She takes your hand and, turning it over, takes a single cautious sniff of your wrist. Phew! Vinegar. Or... embalming fluid? Here, I will remove this smell from you. She mutters a few strange syllables and a light tingling sensation spreads over your skin. In moments, your chemical reek lessens substantially. There, how is that? People should be less eager to avoid conversation with you now. F plus one charisma, okay. Not what I was expecting from that little conversation, but okay. So, I guess join me next time when we see if I can find any more leads towards that whole... I, I want to get a handkerchief. I've seen a couple of them, but I don't want to steal them. Because, you know... I'm still neutral good, I want, and I want to stay that way. So, I guess until next time, this is Melee Wizard, and have a nice day.